Sadina Parks, Queen of Seattle. I am so happy to be here. I'm so happy to just talk with you guys. Um, I just want to do a huge introduction to the wonderful, wonderful Beth Knox here, president of Seattle Sports Commission. She has organized large scale events from over 30 years, as well as consulted in events, sports and live entertainment industry. Her career includes leadership roles at the 2018 Special Olympics, as well as Seafair and Bumber Bumber Shoots. Am I saying that correctly, Beth? Bumber Shoot. Bumber Shoot. Yes. I, I love it. And 2014 produced the Seattle Seahawks Super Bowl Parade. Oh my God! It's so great to have you, Beth. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me, Sadina. It's a pleasure to be here. And we have our partner in crime, Maddie McManera. I said that correctly. Yes, events partnership and manager at the Seattle Sports Commission. She has received her master's degree at the U University of Washington. Um, Maddie was the University of Washington female representative for the Pac-12 Conference Student Athlete Leadership. Wow. As an undergraduate, Maddie competed on the UW women's soccer team and served as the Washington Student Athlete Advisory Council president as well. Maddie has done it all. She's very smart. While she was hitting the books at school, I was doing a little bit something different. Maddie, it's so great to have you here. We have Seattle royalty, literally. So, so Beth and Maddie, I want to ask you both, can you share a little bit about kind of like your day-to-day -day life, you know, what you're doing every day, and share a little bit about the Seattle Sports Commission. Yeah, I'll kick that off. Uh, the Seattle Sports Commission uh, has uh, two purposes. One is to bid on and host major sporting events in the greater Seattle region. So we are looking for opportunities, whether they are NCAA championship events, or they are a MLB All-Star Game or a Special Olympics National Games. We look to bring those events to our region uh, to enhance our quality of life as well as, of course, contribute to the economic impact. But our second purpose is to really be a, a resource for the Seattle sports community. So we are involved with all the pro teams, the university athletic departments, as well as on the youth and amateur and collegiate sports side of things. Uh, one of our focuses right now is to get kids back to play, back in the activities so that they are being healthy and both mentally and physically following the pandemic. So we have a wide range of services that we provide. Some of the things that we are bidding on uh, or that we have bid on and have been awarded include several NCAA championships that will be here uh, in late 2022 all the way through 25 and it ranges from women's regional uh, basketball championships to swimming swimming and dive championships it's it's uh, across the board based on the venues and uh, the services that we can provide to host those events and then we are bidding on uh, future events we are uh, a finalist for the 2026 fifa world cup which wow. is very exciting. Yes. I will know at the end of this year if Seattle will be one of the host cities for that. So uh, that's our uh, current uh, highest profile event, but there's a number of other events from uh, rally cross to beach volleyball, 
uh, to, to an all-star game, like I mentioned. We're, we're going after a lot of uh, different sporting events that would meet the interest and passions of the fans here in Seattle. And, and, and you know, I'm just curious, like, what got you heavily involved, like, you know, in what you do today? I'm just, you know, very, very intrigued by your passion. Yeah, it's a great question, Sedina. And I, I have actually been a member of the Seattle Sports Commission for the large part of my career, nearly 20 years, and uh, in really playing a role in what the commission can do for the region. Uh, but I did that through my events that uh, eventually began connecting more and more with sports. So uh, while I was producing a, the, the region's largest festival, uh, one of the skill sets that we had at that time, in addition to producing events, was producing parades. And so we also had a relationship with the Seahawks. And when they were uh, going to the Super Bowl, they asked a Seafair to help produce their victory parade. So we took on that role which really just put us in line for then when the Seattle Sounders FC won the MLS Cup, we produced their parade and rally, uh, and it just kept uh, escalating from there. So from my standpoint, it all comes down to relationships. And it's because I established those strong relationships with those different uh, leaders of the sports teams, as well as uh, other sports venues in the region that when the opportunity came to be part of the sports commission and to lead the, the efforts, it was a natural uh, choice for me uh, because what I really love to do is bring people together and help them rally around uh, a, a cause or a particular opportunity. And the sports commission allows me to, to combine all of that into one. That's amazing. And, and Maddie, you know, you get not only this wonderful opportunity to work with Beth and the Seattle Sports Commission um, every day, but you as a former athlete, um, you know, a, a graduate right there in your backyard, how proud are you to be able to get to work with, you know, Beth every day? And what are your sort of day to day activities and, and forms of, of movement at the commission? I think that when the opportunity arose, when I first took my internship and it turned into a, uh, a full-time gig, it was a really big uh, opportunity for me. And I think it was, it was really what I wanted to do at the time. Um, you know, I grew up in the youth sports um, environment where I played, you know, six, seven different sports at um, different seasons, different stages in my um, youth career. And I think that the all-encompassing approach to not only empowering um, youth to uh, play and also making a more accessible environment for youth to play, but also bringing more sports to the area because I think, um, you know, as many people say, you can't be it if you can't see it. And I think that bringing those championships and bringing that world-class sporting environment to Seattle I just feel so honored to be able to be a part of that. And I think especially working under Beth has been um, truly amazing. And she took over the sports commission right when the pandemic hit and has led truly a group effort um, and a Seattle first, uh, not necessarily Seattle first, but um, kind of really connected the entire sports franchises, universities, youth, youth engagement, and the city just to, you know, really connect everyone during a time where we couldn't connect in person. And I, I think that we are a stronger city than we were before. And I, I look to, um, you know, keep growing that. And when we get to start throwing more events to throw as many as we possibly can. That's amazing. And, and I want to ask, cause you know, we have to ask, right. Um, have you seen a growth in golf and participation in golf over the last year and throughout the pandemic? And, and if so, what kinds of trends are you seeing? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I played more golf in the past year than I've gotten to play since I was, you know, playing junior golf. Um, I think that whether it's uh, country club memberships or it's, you know, just getting out there on a lot of the public courses, it's really hard to get a tee time. I have not experienced that in Seattle in a while. It was hard to get a tee time in December. It's hard to get a tee <laughs> time now and it's it's really great and I think a lot more people are picking up the sport um, which I think is really something you know there was a time 
um, I think in last May or June, where that was really the only thing you could do outside the sides, you know, go to a park or run or anything like that. And the, the benefits of it for, you know, not only exercise and for um, wellness, there's also so many with being able to connect in a time that it was really, really difficult to outside of being on a screen and really um, I think golf offered uh, not only a way to get out frustrations for sure, with <laughs> especially when you first pick it up, but also just a way to connect and, and a way to get outside for sure. I love that. I have to give a shout out to Seattle um, for having the most fabulous golf course of all time. I don't know if you've all played Sahali, but mm -hmm. that is my all time favorite golf course. So shout out you guys for that. <laughs> yeah it is the best course that and, and and chambers bay is trying to come back okay so they're trying to work on the greens make them a little bit more playable but you know i wanted to ask you maddie you know you're like supposedly you know and from what you tell me and what i've heard you were a really good soccer player okay you were like phenomenal what got you in how does a soccer player get into golf like how did that work yeah, so um, I really credit my dad, uh, he and my mom. He was in sales, um, and when I was born, uh, he kind of made it his mission to make sure that I was able to play golf and kind of be, be in that um, you know quintessential boys club when I did start to get into whatever career I was going to choose. Um, I also think I loved sports as a kid. Golf was definitely not something... Um, that I was going to specialize in like I was with soccer. I think that um, it's, it's, I like team oriented sports a little bit more in terms of, I don't want to rely only on myself at all times because I could be my, you know, best friend, but also worst enemy. Um, but I think that, you know, after college, when I stopped playing soccer, um, I had a couple friends that did start to get into the sport and it was a really fun way for us to, you know, go spend a Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon and kind of connect in a different way. And um, I also saw when I finished my uh, master's degree, kind of that in how how integral it is in the business world um, and to be able to play and go out there. And, you know, I shoot 90s. Um, I've broken or I shot my best score ever is 80. And I have not hit that in, you know, two, three years. But um, I'm a, around 90s. And you know, it, it doesn't matter really what you're shooting, uh, what you're, what you're out there for. It's, it's really just, you know, about fun and about connections and, you know, four to five hours of getting to just spend time with someone else. Yeah, it is. It's a great connective sport. Um, and you know, it's a great way to sort of just be out to mingle, um, get your exercise and there's so many benefits. Beth, can you share with us a little bit about maybe some of the golf concepts or uh, projects you guys might be working on to bring to Seattle? Well, you know, ever since we had the, the U.S. Open at Chambers Bay, Sedina, mm -hmm. you mentioned that uh, in 2015, and uh, it, it, the Chambers certainly has been working since then to, to really uh, create a world-class uh, course. And it recently uh, held the U.S. Amateur Four Ball and uh, received rave reviews from the USGA. Uh, so continuing on and in support of these major uh, events, major tournaments, that is on our priority list uh, as we go forward. And really looking to not not just with Chambers but uh, other places like Sahali that have these premier courses that offer something special for the golfers, but also it's about the, the, the full experience that you have when you come to the Northwest. And uh, we offer a lot uh, by way of the environment, the experience, and uh, increasing the number of golf tournaments here is one of the, the future priorities for the Seattle Sports Commission. Um, and are you, you know, I know that one of the big things that we're talking about um, here at the Seattle Female Forum, um, we're talking about opportunities in sports for women as they graduate college. So the opportunity that, that Maddie had, you know, to, to intern and, and to work, um, how, how are you seeing that growing 
um, just in sports in general mm -hmm. in Seattle, are you seeing more opportunities for, for women getting into the game or getting into to sports and the industry? I, I absolutely am. And uh, that is, I will say that uh, bringing more opportunities to female athletes is also one of our priorities. Okay. Maddie and I are both very committed to that. Uh, and, and it's also about uh, elevating and showcasing uh, women's sports. So it's the combination. It's the, the, the female athlete as well as women's sports in general. So we are always looking for those opportunities. And one of the things that we are, one of the initiatives that we are uh, working on developing right now, hopefully launching it uh, later this summer, is a, uh, a it's a, a membership program for young professionals that allow them to be a little bit on the inside of the sports commission uh, and, and really the sports industry here so that they can socialize with each other, network with each other, meet individuals from our pro teams, our university uh, athletic departments, as well as the sports venues that create those events. Uh, we wanna showcase all of the opportunities within the sports industry. And uh, so that they, a lot of people gravitate toward the pro teams, but mm -hmm. we all know that there are so many more opportunities beyond that. Uh, so really creating those opportunities for any young professional, but certainly with an emphasis on, on women uh, who want to, to uh, get into this industry. Uh, last year, Maddie and I uh, produced a, uh, our women's leadership breakfast, and we had to do it virtual last year, like so many others. And, uh, but what it allowed us to do was create uh, opportunities for scholarships for uh, students and, and young women to participate in the event virtually at no cost to them. And so we, we asked our corporate partners uh, to to buy uh, the, the registration that would allow the scholarship to take place. And it was so well received. Our corporate partners are excited about extending this opportunity to uh, female uh, young professionals and those who are interested in the sports industry. Uh, and we wanna continue those kinds of efforts to, to really give them uh, that, that chance to get involved. Yeah. Maddie, I have a question for you. Um, can you share a little bit about your transition from the sports world to now the business world and what advice would you give for you know young women who do want to you know exit the sports world into the business world um yeah. things that that you could share your fun tips yeah absolutely um you know i think that uh when i graduated college i actually had to medically retire going into my senior year and was not necessarily um as prepared as I could have been for the transition from college athlete to a uh, regular person, I guess. Um, I actually took a year off and I was a high school coach, dog walker, um, kind of did a bunch of different things. Um, and then I actually got to travel the world. Um, I scuba dive as a kind of a part-time hobby and I really learned how to, um, even more so than before, just put myself out there. Um, I traveled by myself, really learned how to connect with people. Um, and then when I got into my master's program, um, I think that that transition to kind of learning the ins and outs of being in the business world. Um, and I think that, you know, sports is so entwined in kind of all industries, um, especially with corporate partnerships, whether you're working for you know, Coca-Cola or Pepsi or um, even Deloitte, you know, they're corporate partners of some of the most major leagues in the country um, and also the world. And I think that, you know, um, I personally believe that sports is a universal language and I think it can connect us all. I had a experience, um, I was able to go to the 2019 um, Women's World Cup and I got to play soccer, just like pick up soccer with these French guys. And we, I don't speak a lick of French, <laughs> you know, any English, but we were able to play this game because we were all kind of connected by sports. And I think that, um, you know, there's a couple ins and outs of <laughs> learning, you know, you can't show up in your team sweats. You got to put on, put on the business suit and be able to, you know, have, have a little bit more professional conversations. But I think that 
a lot of the lessons that I learned from sports, whether it's teamwork or hard work or work ethic in general, they transfer so easily. Um, it's just working on how to apply those to whatever you have. And I think a lot of athletes have that. And I think that that step, you know, across the board is, is really tough, whether you're an athlete or a non-athlete, like graduating and, and moving industries or whatever you're trying to do, as long as you kind of keep those core values and those, uh, you know, principles that you have, you can, you can really accomplish a lot. Do anything. I believe that. I mean, if it's anything, I mean, we're all athletes here. I feel like we're so committed. We don't know how to go into, into things half-heartedly, right? It's like, we're all in or we're all out. You know, once you step on the court, once you step on the field or the course, we just, we've been trained to be committed and, and really give it our all. So it's pretty amazing, Maddie. Thank you for sharing that. What do you guys have for 2022 or, or on? We have a, a annual Seattle um, Sports Commission Open that we have for our kind of membership group. And we love um, being able to have a, you know, kind of a corporate tournament that connects a lot of different partners, a lot of across a lot of industries. Um, I am also committed to, you know, really doing everything that I can. And I think Beth is on the same page to bring a NCAA golf championship to Seattle. I think it would be amazing. I know we've hosted Pac-12 conference tournaments, and I think that the NCAA championship would be an amazing experience um, for for the city of Seattle. Um, I also would, I think Beth and I are both on the same page of bringing both amateur and professional um, women's sports to the, or women's golf tournaments to the area. Um, I think that, you know, we have some unbelievable courses and some really amazing opportunities with a lot of women entrepreneurs in the city that also want to create and grow um, opportunities both for student athletes, for athletes, and just for women in general. That's yeah, beautiful. that is beautiful. And and when, when, you know, you guys do finally get that NCAA championship, we want to be out there. If there's any golf uh, opportunity, we'd love to uh, be able to join forces with you. Um, you guys do amazing work. Um, and I do want to share a little secret. Um, at the Dallas Female Forum, um, we learned uh, through one of the coaches that NBC um, has, you know, they're making a commitment to cover more women's golf on television. Yep. Um, and so they're going to be inclusive of co collegiate golf as well as more professional golf. So I think that this, it's just a good sign. Everything's on the up and up. The game of golf is growing. We're really proud of it. Um, and we're proud... To, to be able to spend this time with you. Thank you so much, ladies, for, for joining us. I have to sharing. say, mm -hmm. I have to say, when we get that invitation, ladies, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're go to not only play my favorite course, Sahali, yeah. but we're going to go to the market. Ooh, Absolutely. for catch sure. Fish. Fresh See, yeah. I'm, too, I'm too fly for catching fish. I don't know if there's enough uh, 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 cover up for me so I don't get my my nice clothes wet you know what I'm saying yes and it's the first Starbucks right right there right outside the market so yep. a lot of history a lot of history in Seattle Absolutely. tons of and history that, ladies we let you guys go we have one fun question Seema's the best at fun questions like like <laughs> out of the blue she's like the fun one she's like the fun one in the group I'm being real okay are you guys ready yeah we're ready so Okay, so it's called Who Would You Rather? All right. Okay, so you guys have to play golf um, and ride in the golf cart for 18 holes with either Russell Wilson or Ken Griffey Jr. Ooh, that's a tough one. <laughs> that is a really good one. Tough. That's a really good one. Oh, they're your Seattle stars. Absolutely. There are That's like picking between your favorite kids, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I know this is a female panel, but you know, Seema always has to bring up the men to, you know, get it spicy. So. All right, I'll give you this. Um, for Seattle Stars, I think I grew up a Mariners fan, and I I have to say I did grow up a Seahawks fan as well. But being in a cart with with the kid would be pretty unbelievable. Um, and I think the women. Inside on that 
side as well would probably be Sue Bird. I think, you know, if I got to be in a foursome with, with <laughs> those two on the course, it would be a pretty unreal day for me. It would be fun. Yeah, I, I, I would, with Maddie from the standpoint that it, it is hard to choose, but I think I would go with Russell. Uh, he is doing so many amazing things for our community right now. And uh, I absolutely love his positive mindset. Uh, and I would want to just hear more about that. So I would, I would choose Russell. And if I was going to uh, ride in a golf cart with uh, a female athlete, I would choose Megan Rapino. There you go. <laughs> okay, you guys are winning. You guys are winning. And Beth has a crush on Russell. We can tell. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you so much, ladies. Maddie, Beth. Um, it was amazing to get to learn more about the Seattle Sports Commission, all the great things you're doing. Um, we're very proud of you and we're wishing you all the success as we leave this pandemic and, and enter our new world. So good luck with everything. And, you know, we'll just make that reservation at Anthony's. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much. We really appreciate it. Thank you, ladies. You guys, you know, you guys are phenomenal. And again, you guys are my queens um, in Seattle. So thank you. Enjoy, enjoy, and, and keep us in mind, okay? Don't forget about us. Don't forget about us. Well, not you're you're on top of our list. Yeah, we're all forget. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thanks for joining Queens on the Green. Thank you. Bye, ladies. Bye. Driving with the queens on the green. Queens on the green.